Fujifilm's X100VI. This is a camera that is going to be discussed a lot and is currently being discussed a lot. Um, I only got to keep this camera for two weeks. Fujifilm did provide this for this first impression. I'm not gonna call it a review because I only got to keep it for two weeks. Okay, so uh, Fujifilm X100VI. Just uh, got it in the mail a couple days ago or a day ago um, from Fujifilm. And so far, so good taking it out, shooting Real Ace and just seeing what I can get. A lot of greenery, so it'll make that simulation pop out a little bit more. And um, yeah, looking for things like this. Light peeking through, it's almost golden hour. It's about six o'clock here in San Antonio. I'm gonna give you my three main points on this really quickly um, so that if you're just looking for a quick answer, you can bounce off of this and I'll explain more a little bit later. But uh, number one, I won't be buying this camera and this camera was not fun to use. Um, has nothing to do with the camera itself or that it was junk or anything like that. It feels great, it works great, but um, it's just not that fun. I wasn't inspired to use it. I didn't wanna pick it up and it had a completely different feeling for me from the X100V. The second thing is that I think this camera is a good camera operationally. I think that you can do professional work with this from the portrait, documentary, BTS side. Uh, I think that this camera uh, you know, checks a lot of bells for people that are um, you know, just creating different types of work and they want an all-in-one small compact rig. Um, mom and dad cam, of course, this is mom and dad certified. Um, you know, a good camera with good performance. If, you use, if you've used an X-T5 or an X-H2, you know exactly what to expect from this. And so that's it. But also if you use the next 100 v you know absolutely what to expect from this. So um, you don't need to watch too many reviews of this. You can just watch a review of those cameras and you're going to get a pretty much similar, uh, you know, um, telling of what's going on. The last point to make about this camera is for everything they added to this camera and that Fujifilm worked really hard to fit in and it sounds like it's great. Uh, they made one mistake in my opinion and I believe it's a fatal mistake as to why I won't buy this camera because for everything they added in, it kind of is just, in my opinion, null and void um, due to a choice they chose to make whenever it came to storage with the UHS-1 and I'll explain my experience with that a little bit later. I want everyone to also understand that I'm not hating on the X100VI just to hate on the X100VI. Um, it is honestly a great camera. Like I said, it works well, functions, it's cool. People like looking at it. They think it's awesome. So many compliments. Um, but it's just the X100V and this is an S model upgrade. Similar to the iPhone 8S, 10S, whatever it is, it's an S model upgrade. Um, there is not much else to it. This does not feel like a huge leap. This feels like if you have an X100V, uh, don't buy this because you don't need it. Just, it doesn't feel like anything different. What I meant whenever I said this thing was kind of boring and it was uninspiring, I didn't want to pick it up is just that. I used the X100V and owned it for, you know, a good while. I had them on loan from Fujifilm, was using it before. And that camera is one that I said was the best camera for the money along any camera system because I was able to use it on portrait sessions, hired work behind the scenes, was able to get you know quick B-roll shots whenever I wanted to. And I was able to do the exact same thing with this camera and still can do the exact same thing with this camera. But the layout, the feel, everything about it just screams X100V. And the only thing that changed on top is the logo and a few other tiny little things like five millimeters of size. And um, because of that, what is there to what what is there to get an impression on? What is there to review? There's not a lot of difference, and to wax poetic for a long time on the positives of a new look or of a new you know camera, even though there's only one or two changes, maybe a little bit faster here, which you can't really tell, or I couldn't tell based off of usage because that UHS one card slot, or you know maybe slightly better resolution because it has a small bump. I couldn't tell. I didn't really pixel peep or push in. I printed a couple uh, images and that's it. Um, but because of that, it just, it doesn't feel like there's anything different. If you're upgrading f to this from the X100V, the, or the only thing you're going to be able to see as a difference is the Real Ace and the Nostalgic Neg. And that's it. And those are great. I love Real Ace. I think it looks fantastic, but, um, yeah, it just, it feels like a, Hey, we got to throw something out there. Let's throw it out there. doesn't mean it's bad. That's great. Camera's great. The sensor, the processor are in the X-T5, the X-H2, and those are amazing. But it feels like an S upgrade, which we criticize, you know, whenever it comes to Apple. Um, we criticize whenever it comes to Samsung with the light upgrades. Um, this is basically what it is. Now, I'm not saying these things either because I, I wanna I wanna let everyone know. If you're gonna go in the comments and talk about this an overrated camera, the X100V was overrated. They're not overrated cameras. They are rated the way they should be, period. 
If you are upset and call this thing a TikTok camera or a social media camera or no real professional is going to use it, listen, just I, I don't care about your opinion because the only people that are making that are, are comment or assessment are people that are jealous that other people made TikTok content or YouTube content about this camera or took photos of an Instagram about this camera and they got engagement and you don't get engagement because your work sucks. Stop hating on things because they're popular. It's weird. It's funky. It's lame as shit. I get it. If you don't, if you get annoyed with people having something as their whole personality, I, I shoot film. I hate film photographers that make film their whole personality. But when you hate on stuff just because it's popular, that's lame as shit. Stop doing that. That's f all just lame. But yeah, the images, everything looks great. If you use an X-T5, you've seen the way it works. Uh, if you've used uh, you know, an X-H2, X-H2S, you see the way that it works. That imaging is gonna be just fine, just the same. Um, the sensor type at 40 megapixels like the X-H2 is the exact same. The process is the exact same. There is a difference in performance because again, this is a, uh, the lens is fixed lens. It has a leaf shutter. There's some different, different, different things there. But if you want to know how different they are, go watch an X100V video because it's the exact same camera. Um, but as far as imaging and stuff, it's great. The video processing um, is very, very nice too. Um, the, 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 the video looks good. I mean, I can't say anything else about it, man. It's 6.2K, it's 4K, it is, you know, all these different things. It is, it's just good, crisp image. F-Log2, my favorite gamma curve right now. The reason why I haven't switched from Fujifilm uh, for professional videography work, like it is a good ass camera. And I'm very, very happy that Fujifilm was able to uh, pull this off in such a tiny package. This is literally a mini X-H2 or X-T5. Even from external recording um, into an Atomos Ninja V, I was told on the call with Fujifilm that this could record ProRes out similar, um, you know, external, uh, ProRes uh, RAW, I think, external, similar to the X-T5. Um, yeah, it has the old battery, which is kind of an issue for me now. At first, it didn't bother me, but now it does because why? I mean, just add the bigger size. This kind of locks people into that generation of battery. And now if there are people that are looking to have multiple cameras in the Fujifilm X mount system or in GFX, now they have this one stray battery because we've gone away for, uh, gone away from it with everything else. If you are not going to keep that battery in line with the XS20, with the XT line, with the XH line, to do it on the X100V to me was a cop out. I don't agree with that. But um, it works just fine. You can rig this thing out, put a ba uh, backup battery on the back, and just plug it in, and it's going to go fine. I didn't have any issues with overheating, but I didn't really test for it because why am I going to try to overheat something whenever I'm using it for work? But yeah, images look good. Ibis is okay. It's not bad, but no Ibis is better than, or some Ibis is better than no Ibis. Me, I'm a tripod guy. If I necessarily need something held for a long time, I need to record a video. And honestly, I like a little shake. So the Ibis was just kind of all right for me. It's similar to the X-H1 Ibis. Let's just put it like that. You either loved it and were okay with it or you hated it. Um, so similar to the X-H1 Ibis, that's just the way that it feels. Um, but image quality standpoint, it looks great. There's nothing to complain about with this camera. Okay, so getting into things I didn't like. Listen, before I do, this camera's great. It's gonna be great for any kind of professional setting outside of stuff like, you know, telephoto sports. Um, Reggie Bolesteros used this camera um, to do some stuff with um, capturing cars. And if any of you have ever captioned cars in fast motion, um, you know, he shared his settings, but like at a 40th of a second, F11, you know, and you're panning to capture these things, it's gonna be sharp, it's gonna be nice. Um, you don't have anything to worry about, that's gonna work. If you're using this for a soccer or something as a second cam, not a first cam, yeah, it's gonna be great. A behind the scenes cam, um, a portrait camera, street photography. Um, it's gonna it's gonna work. It's going to be great. Mom and dad cam, friend cam, travel cam. It's going to be great. The great thing about this camera system is it's so small but so powerful. You can do so much with it. The autofocus on this camera was very very tricky, and I'm not sure if it was just because I was shooting a continuation too much. But if I did zone wide tracking or just large zone uh, focusing, um, like the the autofocus for zone, like where you make the larger box, if I use that. I struggled with ac acquiring uh, focus on subject det detection on things other than cars. Um, it would focus to the foreground mid shooting. Don't know if that's a bug. Don't know if anything. I made sure it was updated to the latest firmware. That was something that happened multiple times, not every time, multiple times, or it wouldn't focus on a subject if they were backlit, period, only focusing on foreground. Never had that happen in the X100V. Didn't expect that to happen here. 
I'm kind of chalking that up to something else like being a, maybe this is an older unit or pre-production unit, but my boy Dorian Coleman had the same issue, similar issue with focus, single, single point worked all day, but Dorian had a similar issue with autofocus, but my buddy Reggie Ballesteros did not have the same issue. So I'm not really sure about that. I'm just charging that one to the game. It is what it is. And then there's the battery. I, I just feel like just put in the larger battery. There's no notes beyond that. Put in the larger battery. I don't want to have a discussion about anything else about how well the processor does, um, you know, and it actually, it lasts longer now. I don't care. Make the battery the same across the board. But the last thing, and the thing that really, really bugged me is that UHS-1 card slot. And we'll just be very brief on here. I had a lot of issues with video where I was recording a video in 4K, 6.2K, F-Log2. I'm not going to change the way I record just to make the camera work. That's Those are the settings that I record in. I'm not going to just record in a film simulation. I don't care if people say, well, if you use this, you know, these settings instead of this, I don't care. I'm recording the way that I like to record in the highest settings possible, the best image and best bit rate possible. If I would record a, sec, uh, a, a, a video over 10 to 20 seconds, press stop, but then immediately I need to do something else, the camera is going to keep writing that for about five to six seconds the moment's passed. I can't stand that. The UHS-1 card slot is not equipped to handle everything in this. With taking frames at about 15 frames, 15 frames per second in raw, it would start to bunch up and I have to wait a little bit. I'm not usually shooting like that with this and so I can't really fault it for that because it's not a sports camera. So it is what it is. But the video part pissed me off. And that's the thing that's an issue whenever, in my opinion, you're taking shortcuts whenever it comes to putting out a new camera. This camera feels like it was put out because we have to put out something and we have to put out an X100V successor. It wasn't put out because we put our very best foot forward. And this may sound harsh, and to Fujifilm, I am very, very glad and gracious that you provide me with these cameras to be able to do these type of things, these first impressions, these reviews. But I, I, but I believe that you can do better. And I believe that you need to understand that right now where you're at, just giving this tiny little upgrade and keeping that, you could have easily changed that UHS-2 slot and then justified the price that you have on it now by changing that slot. By not doing that, I have an issue because I feel like no matter what, everything you're touting about video and being a dual threat hybrid camera, it's not true because it does not perform. Imagine if I recorded a, I think the runtime was the highest was 20 minutes in 6.2K with a um, 128 gig card that I had. If I was to record that for 10 minutes and then press stop, how long until I could I record again? I mean, if I had to, you know, like do something and, oh no, I need to get this B-roll real quick or this behind the scenes, how long would that be junked up? 20 seconds, 30 seconds? That, in my opinion, is what's unacceptable. Stop touting things as being a replacement, as being professional, as being all these things. Professional, honestly, that term is overused so damn much. You wanna know it's professional, it's reliability. That's it. When it comes to cameras that professionals like, that I like, that in the DSLR days, everyone liked, that some of my colleagues in sports photography and videography and photography still like, it is reliability. Can the images look the same all the time? Can the images process the same all the time? Is it quick? Is, are my, am I going to miss stuff, etc.? That's what we care about. I don't give a damn about aperture. I don't give a damn about low, you know, low noise uh, or high ISO noise. I don't give a damn about all these little, uh, oh, does it have a 180 degree global shutter? I don't give a damn. Is it reliable? And in my opinion, on the video side, which was touted, especially in the call that I was in, it's not that reliable. And again, this isn't a video camera. This is a great maybe B-roll camera. It's a behind the scenes camera for that. It's not a cinema camera. But when you tout things like that, and then I have an issue, and now I can't capture something else I wanna capture, I have an issue with that. The UHS-1 card slot, in my opinion, is just dog water, and it shouldn't have been done. It shouldn't have been added in there, it should have been a UHS-2 card slot, and you should have taken more time to add that in there if it was such a big change, uh, you know, if, um, if you really want to put out a great product. I think it's a really good camera. I think that compared to the X100V, because of the price, if this was priced the same amount as the X100V, I would get it, uh, like or understand the camera where it sits. But I don't, because it's overpriced due to the fact that for everything you added in, that UHS one card slot just completely ruins the experience for me. And it did multiple times. I just started handing this to people to use instead of me at one point, not because I didn't think that you know it was good enough, but because for me, I wanted what was reliable. And so I had other people shooting with me. Some of them had autofocus issues too, and that was reported back to me. Or um, you know, 
for the most part, everyone just loved it and thought it was cool and got a lot of compliments. But that UHS-1 card slot really did upset me. A lot of people are going to say it's nitpicking. People are going to say, oh, you know, you're just a Fujifilm hater. You're a Leica shield, et cetera. Well, join, jo join the club of calling me a shield of something because when I'm positive about Fujifilm and honest about their stuff when it's good, I'm a Fujifilm shill. When I'm negative about a camera company like Fujifilm because things didn't, you know, you know, weren't up to par, I'm a Leica shill. But yeah, man, it's just, it could have been better. The UHS, if this was a UHS-2 card slot, I would have forgiven the battery. I wouldn't care if it wouldn't, if it wouldn't last as long. I would have forgiven a lot. But that UHS-1 card slot really rubs me the wrong way. Um, I think it was pretty lame to put that in there. Um, over this, I'm sure I overla overlaid photos and videos of everything, but um, that really is the issue. Everything else is really great about this camera. The UHS-1 card slot, and I'll even add in the battery, that's bad to me. And that brings it from being a great all-around camera to just an okay camera that I would not recommend. I only got two weeks with it, though. Maybe things get better after a little while. Maybe I start to understand it. But I don't. Uh, this sits right behind the G the X100V and the GR3 for me when it comes to compact cameras. I hope you guys understand that's my first impression of this. Again, it's not a review because I did not have it that long. It was only two weeks. I usually have this thing for anywhere from 21 to, I don't know, three weeks to five weeks, basically. Um, do the math on that 21 to, you know, 38, 48 days or whatever it is. So with all that being said, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. If I'm allowed to use this at a later date for more time, I'll give you more thoughts on it and update it. But um, take it light, but take it and have a good one.